Hey guys, welcome back to Vita vs 3DS. With E3 2013 completely wrapped up and digested, I just wanted to make a quick video talking about my thoughts on how Sony and Nintendo treated the Vita and the 3DS during the show. So E3 is pretty much the biggest games event in the world, and this is especially relevant in the Western market. So neither the 3DS nor the Vita are doing particularly well in the Western markets. Um, of course, we you know, no, 3DS is doing better than Vita is, but it's not doing particularly well, especially compared to the DS. Um, so making this E3 was particularly important for both Sony and Nintendo to really highlight uh, the features of their portables. So for a lot of people, especially the Vita, um, and give them, you know, the shot in the arm that they needed. So did they succeed? Well, you know, uh, according to me, we'll find out. So now we're going to move on to Sony right away. Um, the Vita visibility during the press conference, and I think anyone who's watched the Sony press conference will acknowledge this, was just downright pathetic. Uh, Sony literally only spoke about the Vita for three minutes, maybe just over three minutes at the beginning of the press conference, and the tone of it was really just to get it out of the way as quick as possible to talk about the PS4. So literally the only surprise they announced in those three minutes, which of course no trailers were shown during those three minutes, just maybe a quick little montage of him mentioning games that were coming, which were mostly uh, ports or compilation titles or remasters or whatever. The only surprise during the whole press conference was that God of War HD 1 and 2 were coming to Vita as well. Um, and, uh, and that's it, really. Um, anyway, so the next thing to announce, we'll talk about really was that there was no price cut at all, um, which I of course predicted in my prediction video and didn't come true. Uh, there, the only thing we can really hope for at this point is that this this summer when uh, the Walking Dead bundle, which they did announce uh, for the Vita, comes out, is that they'll announce a price cut then. Maybe they're waiting for a game to come along because it's undeniable that Vita needs a price cut. Uh, Anyway, so the next thing to talk about was, uh, like last year, last year Sony had 25 games on the show floor. So of course last year many people complained that Sony ignored the Vita during the press conference, but Sony was quick to tout that we have we had 25 games on the show floor. This year they ignored the Vita even worse during the press conference, but now they say they had 30 games on the show floor. So I saw the list, and while I didn't play the vast majority of the numbers of the titles on that list, um, and I do... I am looking forward to playing them. Subtracting ports and multi-platform titles and remasters and indie games were literally quite, and I'm not exaggerating, we're literally left with maybe like Killzone, Tearaway, and maybe a couple other third parties I'm forgetting about. Like maybe like two or, th or three or four games max. The rest of them were either ports or remasters or compilations or indie titles that we've either played before or can we, we can play on another console. Which is, you know, again, uh, in my year in review video, I talked about how people talk, uh, say, you know, ports are non-games and um, and indie games aren't real games, and that's, you know, that's a bunch of crap. Those they're games, and I'm really excited to play them. And many people haven't played those ports, like me. I haven't played the vast majority of the titles on the show floor, and I'm really I'm gonna play them on my Vita. But this doesn't give people a reason to buy a Vita. I already have one. That's why I'm looking forward to playing them. But for people who don't have them, for my friends who don't have them, how am I gonna convince? them to get one when, you know, the vast majority of those titles are available on other systems. So this is something I don't think Sony's really getting, and they didn't get with the PSP either. Um, anyway, so um, with Vita selling about 20000 per month in the US these last couple months, it needed big moves from Sony, not just the three minutes, um, you know, talk about in a press conference with virtually no new announcements or strategy changes. So Sony ultimately condemned the Vita last week to continue the sales it has been getting, the really low sales, um, at least until the next event uh, where, you know, some big titles or big price cuts are announced, uh, maybe during TGS or something. So with all that said and all that negativity, I just wanted to say that I'm personally happy with the footage that I saw from the games that I saw uh, after the press conference. Killzone, I saw it running at 30 frames per second and at native resolution, and it, that was just mind blowing. I can't believe a game that good doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to have downgraded resolution or shoddy frame rate like like we've seen uh, in uh, in other Vita titles, especially last year. And seeing more of Tearaway, which you know is uh, Media Molecules platformer for PS Vita, just Tearaway looks awesome. I'm just so impressed with that, and I have really really high expectations after what I've seen uh, at E3 this year. 
So now we're going to move on to the 3DS. So Nintendo opted out of having a press conference this year and instead relied on a 40 minute Nintendo Direct video as well as a short awkward event at the show floor which many people complained about. Um, as mentioned in my E3 predictions video, I do understand Nintendo's decision to do this as they would be playing third fiddle to the PS4 and the Xbox One anyway. But I still disagree that it was a good move. The vast majority of gamers were talking about the PS4 and the Xbox One while completely ignoring Nintendo anyway, and not having a press conference just makes that worse, not better. Uh, so I think that defeats the purpose of E3 entirely, because the purpose of E3 is to really get gamers hyped up for the system, not to be ignored, which Nintendo largely was. They were just, you know, playing on their own. There's actually a little animated gif of uh, this kid hitting, um, playing with the ball by himself, and, like, that's basically what Nintendo was doing at E3, like, while everyone was com almost completely ignoring them. So, um, Nintendo didn't really have any new 3DS announcements at all, but they instead relied on showing new footage of already announced 3DS titles in their Nintendo Direct video. Um, a new trailer for Pokemon X and Y was shown, detailing some new features which looked really cool actually, and the Smash Bros for 3DS and Wii U was finally shown, which I lost my mind, as most people did when Mega Man came out there, and I'm super excited to play it on 3DS. I think that even though 3DS is much less powerful than the Wii, and it has to have, like, you know, obviously some visual downgrades, I think it just looks visually stunning with that new art style, and I cannot wait to play that on my 3DS. So, um, a short montage of third-party support was also shown in the video, and it was highlighted, it highlighted a few 3DS games uh, from third parties, but they didn't look particularly impressive, and there weren't very many of them. So, um, while I'm disappointed with Nintendo's 3DS offerings, I still think Nintendo beat Sony on the portable front this year at E3 2013, not because of the quality of the games, or not because of the number of the games, because I feel that Sony did have more games at the conference. Uh, and, you know, Sony's games did look great, too. It's not, it's not a matter of quality or numbers. It's a matter of dedicating time to those games being shown off in their main event video. Nintendo Direct, this Nintendo Direct video really had a lot of time shown to 3DS games, much more than Sony gave to Vita with Sony's much longer event. Um, Wii U did take up most of the time, but 3DS games were still talked about and highlighted during the video multiple times, whereas Sony just gave three, uh, uh, the Vita just three minutes at the beginning of the video and then didn't talk about it ever again. So overall I must say I'm disappointed um, at both Sony and Nintendo for their showings uh, for the Vita and the 3DS at E3 2013. Um, I realize that the Western market is more about consoles than portables, and I also realize that the Wii U in, and the PS4 uh, Wii U struggling, of course, and the PS4 needs a good start, so they really need to be highlighted, especially in a console-heavy market, and I do understand that, and I don't fault Nintendo or Sony for spending more time on their consoles. However, E3 is all about big game announcements, whether it's on a console or a portable, and both companies really failed to deliver that on the portable front, in my opinion. All the surprises that Nintendo had were for Wii U, and all the surprises Sony had were for the PS4, really. So... Luckily, E3 isn't the hub where all the new game announcements are shown. Uh, portables are much more popular in Japan than in the West, so I'm cautiously optimistic about the Tokyo Game Show later this year. I won't be making any predictions, as my predictions uh, for E3 just really uh, suck this year. But, uh, but yeah, I have high hopes, and I really hope that Sony delivers um, on you know an announcing some big uh, titles, especially for Japan, uh, on the Vita, and I really hope that Nintendo delivers, and uh, like they have been delivering, Nintendo has been doing really, really well this last half year, uh, announcing really cool 3DS titles, but, um, you know, I, it's starting to get a little dry on the 3DS front too, so I really want something else to look forward to besides Pokemon uh, this fall. Anyway, so that's it, that's my take on uh, E3 2013, I'm really looking for, forward to E3 2014 and the other events, and anyway, so thanks for watching guys. Bye.